Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Uh, let's do another video. And, uh, you know, again, I'm going to say it, you know, Mosler just doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, and I've said that for a very long time. Uh, and we see it yet again. Uh, fortunately, with uh, TradingView, we get to put uh, tweets where um, in the chart they were mentioned. Okay. Uh, and, and we go all the way back... Um, to uh, 2019, I think it is, 2020, whatever it was, <coughs> where, it says, where Moser says, fundamentally, with the floating FX, rate hikes weaken the currency. Rate hikes weaken the currency. That's what he said. I'd cut the policy to zero. Now, <laughs> and, and that's, that's right here. Uh, then he goes on to say, uh, Turkey's still high interest rates are lending support to inflation, not fighting it. In my humble opinion, Erdogan has it right all along uh, on that score. Then he repeats it again, Erdogan has it right. So, if Erdogan has it right, then why did the Turkish lira just collapse uh, on fears of uh, lowering the rates? Let's go back in time, and you're going to see here uh, that the uh, Turkish uh, Central Bank raised interest rates to 19%. What happened to the Turkish Lira? It rose. Then they started talking about lower rates. What happened? And, uh, and uh, Mosley was agreeing. What happened then? Another collapse. Okay. And then it stabilized because it didn't lower the rates. And then here we go again. Uh, this is how bad and ass backwards Mosler does not understand the currency market. Okay. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's really, really, really bad. Let's go back here. All right. Turkey lowers interest rates to 8%. What happened? Collapse. The entire currency collapsed. Right. And despite the fact that in the face of reality, Mosler was proven wrong before in his stupid claims, uh, he keeps doubling down. Because he doesn't care if he's right. He cares that people listen and believe he's right. Because most people that follow him, they're laymen. They're, they're a bunch of nobodies. They're not going to go out and double check what he says. He just says things for the sake of saying them. Because he knows that people are stupid and they're not, they're not going to you know, uh, argue with him. Uh, when uh, interest rates are... Ri uh, had risen to 24%, they had raised them to 24%, what happened to the Turkish lira? Right? It had collapsed, and then they raised interest rates, and then it stabilized again. It didn't collapse. Right? It was not until they said, oh, wait, yeah, we're going to cut interest rates to 8% that it started to collapse. Okay? This is reality, folks. This is not, uh, you know one theory versus another theory one opinion versus another opinion this is not this is reality it was a conversation with Warren uh, back on March 21st and again I say it's highly misleading okay well for now uh, Turkish they're looking for 10 to 1 how did that work out how did that work out? Here's March 21. Back here, it was 8 to 1. So, 8 Turkish lira for $1. Fast forward to today, where is it? 10.6 to $1. Okay? You can't, <laughs> you can't deny it. You can't keep running around and saying, Higher interest rates are inflationary. No, they're not. No, they're not. Okay. Now, so where does he come up with this? Why, why is he? 
why is he trying to push that idea? And by the way, don't say that I didn't short it. Okay, it it was shorted. So don't don't tell me it's not shorted. I put my money where my mouth is. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I could put could have put more. So where does he come up with this idea? Well, here's the funny part. The interest income, as he calls it, mechanism, meaning when the government is paying interest to bondholders, it increases the money supply. It increases the money supply. Therefore, it pushes inflation. Okay. Now, he can understand that. But he cannot understand, supposedly, that deficits do the same thing. Now, how the fuck does that work? How is it that you can understand that you are printing money to pay bondholders in the same way you're printing money to spend into the economy? It's the same thing. The argument is that, well, you know, if, if you're spending into the economy then the economy is going to grow. No. No, that's not the way it works. In fact, we now know that if you spend excessive amounts of money into the economy, the only thing that you're going to do is push inflation. Inflation in where the CPI measures it. You see, all money ends up in savings. Okay? Um, and... Uh, when you when you spend that money into the productive economy it goes through the profit mechanism to savers okay if you're just directly paying savers interest on that uh, bond you're not causing inflation in the productive economy you're causing inflation in uh, uh, asset prices so he can understand that printing money causes inflation. He gets that. He just gets it wherever he sees fit. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference. That's the difference. He plays stupid when it comes to deficit spending, but he doesn't play stupid when it comes to paying bondholders. Now you're saying you're saying to yourself that well, isn't it better if it just the money is spent into the productive economy? And the answer is no. And the reason it's not is because it causes inflation. And when it causes inflation, the bottom 50% gets screwed. You see, stocks are very good uh, for, for inflation because revenues are going to rise, because prices are going to rise, right? Profits are going to rise, at least nominally. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not talking about uh, inflation adjusted, right? Profits are going to rise nominally, okay? So there'll be, there'll be some protection for savers. For everybody else, you get screwed. You got to pay more at the pump, more for food, more for everything. Okay. Now, what happens when you're paying interest to bondholders? First of all, why do you have to pay more higher interest rates? Why does Turkey have to pay higher interest rates to bondholders? Because there's so much inflation that nobody wants to hold that currency. They print it, they borrowed, and they import it trying to get to prosperity. It doesn't work. Not even if you're a world reserve currency, it doesn't work. Okay? You cannot print, borrow, and import to prosperity. And that's extremely important for people to understand. So as, you know, uh, they keep printing and borrowing and importing, it works for a while. It, it does. Right? It masks it. You're kind of like, okay, all right, okay, all right. Eventually, it hits that, what I call, snap moment. When it snaps. And then everything starts to deteriorate. Uh, and when it starts to deteriorate, what happens? People say, you know what? Here's your Turkish lira. Give me a dollar. Give me a euro. Give me a pound. Give me a Canadian pound. Give me a Japanese yen. I don't want your Turkish lira. Take it back. 
that drains whatever reserves that nation has. And as the, re the foreign currency reserves start to drain and you're an importer, you're not going to replenish. You don't have enough uh, of those uh, foreign currencies. And as it starts to drain, it creates more fear because it will be harder and harder to get euros, dollars, whatever from Turkey. So people start to panic sell uh, the Turkish lira. The more they panic sell the Turkish lira, the more people want to get out. The only way to stop that is by raising interest rates. You're promising that you will make it at least uh, as to whatever inflation is uh, for them to hold on to that uh, Turkish lira. Now, Warren Mosler's bright idea is, hey, don't give him anything. <laughs> don't give bondholders nothing. Let them lose money. Okay. So why is anybody going to buy a Turkish lira? Why is anybody going to give them euros or dollars or yen for Turkish lira? If inflation is just going to be out of control. They won't. They won't. It doesn't even make sense. It's stupid. So, if you're not going to pay at least more Turkish lira to offset inflation, right, then there's no point in anybody investing in a Turkish lira. And that's how hyperinflation uh, follows, okay? That's how it works. Nobody wants the currency. Look at Venezuela. Look at Argentina. Okay, there's 148 nations since 1960 that have blown themselves up. And yet again, you're watching it live. You're watching it live. Watching the Turkish lira hit all-time lows. Crashing. Now, this chart is showing that the dollar is going up. Okay. I can show you this one. Same thing. In reverse. Turkish lira collapsing. Okay. It's collapsing. Why? Because Warren Mosler doesn't fucking understand Forex. Erdogan doesn't understand forex they don't understand real macroeconomics they don't understand the monetary system this is the second biggest fuck up uh that mmt has predicted would go completely the opposite direction uh yeah you can print sure it's wonderful go ahead they never saw inflation coming in the u.s not once when it came, they made excuses. It's transitory. It's supply chain. It's supply chain, really? Why is there a supply chain problem? What created all that artificial demand? Yeah. People receiving checks, sitting on the couch, going on Amazon. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. Okay. And then there wasn't enough supply because we were in a pandemic. So you did get that supply shock yeah now is that the reason why no that's not the reason why it's partly the reason why the real reason is that there was so much excessive money that funneled into the savings bubble via the profit mechanism via you know loans federal guaranteed loans uh, from federal reserve and whatever else they came up with that it created a spillover effect from stocks, bonds, commodities, I'm sorry, uh, real estate, and into commodities. Here are corporate profits after taxes, okay? And during the pandemic, they soared. They soared. Why? And this is per quarter. It's $2.6, $2.7 trillion of corporate profits per quarter. It was as low as about 1.6. It almost doubled in corporate profits. How does that happen when everybody's just sitting at home? How does that happen? If there's a supply chain, well, obviously they can't get product to market, so they can't sell stuff, right? But they do, and they did, and they made record profits. So is it supply chain? No. That's not the reason. 
Is it partially the reason? Yes. I repeat it again. I repeat it again. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Well, when you keep interest rates at zero, and you're saying, well, I can own a bond or I can own a commodity, they're both going to yield 0% interest. I'm going to go buy commodities. Here they are. Here's commodities. Look what happened um, in commodity prices. All commodities. They soared. They exploded to the upside. Non-stop. Meanwhile, while this was happening, and again, I, you know, <laughs> another huge fuck up for uh, MMT, is that they were like, oh, it's transitory. Deflation is getting serious. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Even Colin Roach, oh, you know, the sustained uh, low inflation remains high. They missed it. Why? Why did they miss it? Because they assumed like it's that it's like before, that there's just not going to be any inflation. That money creation does not cause inflation. That's the belief. So therefore, uh, as long as um, you know we've been deflating, uh, not deflating, but we've had less and less and less inflation for decades now. That it will remain to be the same way. That it will just continue to wither away. No matter how much money we printed. Because in their little world, money creation doesn't matter. Look at Natasha. She says, I told you inflation fears would be the weapon of choice. What are you talking about? What, what world does she live in? She can't even comprehend that inflation is here at 6.2%. It doesn't even compute. They have no plan. You know what their plan is? Print more money. That's their plan. Okay. Um, so, one, inflation. They never saw it coming. Two, it came. They have no plan for it except to print more. Three, Turkish lira. Oh, lower interest rates. That's going to be great for uh, the Turkish lira. It's going to fix inflation. Didn't do it. Collapse the currency even more. How much more do people need to see? before they start understanding that MMT is just a bunch of bullshit. It's a fucked up theory. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take. But it will eventually sink in. It will. Lastly, I'll leave you with this. Um, they say that, you know, government deficits equals our savings, blah, blah, blah. We're all going to be rich. We just need more deficits, blah, blah, blah. They've been saying that for 10 years, by the way. And why has it been in 10 years and after $18 trillion... Uh, over 14 years or whatever it's been, uh, we're not all richer. Why not? Why is that? In fact, labor force participation is in the dumps. There's less people working today than there were 10 years ago when MNT came on the scene. And yet you still have the same people going out there every single day for 10 years, $18 trillion, and still they're crying. So how much money is enough? You know, 36 trillion, 66 trillion, <laughs> what, 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 100 trillion? How much should we print a year for these people to be happy? Okay, U.S. family income it has been falling. You had this artificial spike, artificial spike here, because government was just handing out money. It's like, oh wait, look at it, it's right, you know, hey, we're all rich, and then what happened? Boom. Inflation came in and destroyed everything. Your purchasing power is being destroyed. Okay. Family income is falling while prices are rising. Horrible. And if you think the solution is, hey, you know, let's just get them wages up. Okay. What do you think that's going to do? Lower interest rate? I'm sorry, uh, lower inflation? No. It won't do that. It's going to push even more inflation. <laughs> See? That's the problem with inflation. You start getting into that yin-yang, you know, back and forth, back and forth, you know, prices rise and wages fall, then wages uh, rise and prices rise even more. <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's a disaster. You're playing with fire. You're playing with fire. Okay. Now everybody's hoping 
that all that money is going to funnel through the profit mechanism, go into the savings bubble, and then it's just going to start to disappear. That's what the hope is. Okay? But if wages start to rise, that hope is going to go right out the window. It is. Because with higher wages, you're going to have more consumption. And what are they going to tell you then? Still transitory? Still supply chain? What are they going to tell you then? I don't know. What I do know is that even if inflation starts to subside, the damage that has been done is not going to be undone. Meaning home prices up 24%, 20% in a year. <clears throat> Those prices are not going to fall. Because if they do, then you're going to have a banking problem. Car prices. Medium car price at 47000 now. Historic high. Um, commodities. Um, you know, again, Kimberly Clark is not going to come out and Smuckers and everybody else say, hey, you know, we're going to lower, uh, we're going to lower prices. They're not going to do that. And then you look at the Fed. The Fed is like, yeah, we're not raising interest rates. Nope, not doing it. Okay, don't do it. So when are you going to do it? When um, inflation starts to subside, if it does. Um, when uh, supply starts to become too much. When are you going to do it? When everything starts to snap backwards, going into a recession, you're going to raise interest rates. You're going to start tapering. Think about it. When are they going to raise them? Never. That's <laughs> catch-22. You can't win. That's the problem. Anyway, <coughs> epic fucking mistakes. Stupid theory of MMT. Doesn't work. I told you for years. Honestly, I didn't think uh, I would be able to show it to you in real time. Uh, but I can. And I am. And I have been. And I will continue to do so. Alright. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.